Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of the UK Connection alongside my comrades in arms from the UK, Mr. Simon Bray from Lancashire and Stephen Reed from Perth, Scotland. Good evening, gentlemen. Evening for you guys, right? It is, yes, indeed. Evening. Good afternoon, Pete. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, today we're back to ranking the songs on a classic album. And uh, this happens to be Simon's favorite album in the entire universe, even above and be above the first Leonard Skinner album. This is uh, Led Zeppelin IV today, right? Or Untitled or Zoso. Well, or, it's at least true that that's the album we're doing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we're not going to get a, oh, you you think that that's what we're going to do today, right? <laughs> oh, no, that is, what we're, that is what we're doing. Yes, yes. I may have fibbed a little bit as far as your favorite album is concerned, but it ranks up there. I know that. Yeah. There you go. This bad boy. All right. Yeah, we touched on this last week. That's, that's a crap cover. <laughs> the cover. Always hated the cover. Yeah, it's it's one of the most iconic and, and recognized covers of all time. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But yeah, it's mysterious. Uh, yeah. We, I mean, how many times have we talked about these album covers where you don't have a band logo on it? You don't even have the name of the album. You don't have song titles. You get, you get give us something, nothing, right? But yep. it's iconic. And I think it's iconic because it's, you know, cited as one of the greatest rock albums of all time. But we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, before we do... I'm excited because I'm going to join you guys today. Uh, we got beverages to uh, to dish out and talk about. So, Simon, what you drinking? Well, I'm still astonished that I still don't understand the difference in time zones. I really thought you thought you weren't joining us today, but you are, so that's good. I am. Thanks. I've got from the um, Garden Brewer in Zagreb. I've got cherry and coconut imperial stout. Wow, that you sounds know. oddly it's intriguing. Sick. So I thought seven. you were about to say awful. Well, no, Stephen, one thing you got to know about me, and I'm amazed you don't in all these years we know each other, uh, I love anything that has coconut in it. I am a coconut-aholic. I, I, I like coconut. I do not like cherry. A lot of people don't. I, I, you know what I hear from people all the time? They say, especially cherry in liquor or beer yep. or whatever, they say it, it tastes like medicine. Yep. See, I love cherry, so I don't have an issue with it. But I know a lot of people that don't. Like, do you have bounty bars in America? Bounty bars? That's got coconut in. Nobody likes that shit. It's always la left to last. Oh, don't start that. That's the, you've just done their marketing campaign for celebrations there, haven't you? <laughs> and if they want to send me some, then um, I'll, I'll, I'll take the bounties if they want to have them. <laughs> you, can have the, you can have the bounties. Anyway, I've poured this in uh, my Hogshead uh, brew house uh, glass. So uh, I'm sat here in Lancashire. And this is all the way from Yorkshire. Yay. Nice. So like, combining all the great things from the north of England. And I'm going to take a sip of this cherry coconut imperial stout right now. And I'm going to give a very good. Oh, you know what? Even if I hadn't prepared this record, I'd be snoozing soon just after that sip. That's <laughs> velvety goodness. It really is. What's the ABV on. on that sucker? Seven. Seven? Yeah, it's a quiet little seven. Okay, that's not too bad. I thought sometimes you hear Imperial Stout and it's like 10, 10 and a half. And I'm like, oof. Yeah. But that that sounds very good. I I'm I would love to try that. Well, it's mine. Okay. As you can tell, do, can you tell I'm wanting to hear more? I like I want to hear like what does it smell like? What does it taste like? You know. Oh, it smells like cherry. Oh, okay. So no coconut. Oh, getting, no, and no, stouty. No, I'm not getting it. Not getting a, a coconut smell. Not really getting a coconut taste, but Jesus Christ, that's gone right to the back of my throat. <laughs> no. no. This is all you do. I don't know. What you're doing right now is you're stopping me from talking about this great album that you know I love. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's my you're fault. just putting it off. The coconut just threw me off. I'm, and now, all you know what I can, I can think of right now? There's a brewery that's like 15 miles away that has an amazing coconut cream ale. I'm driving out there either tonight or tomorrow, and I'm getting <laughs> some. So, yeah, see, that's all you need to do. Anyway, sorry, Stephen, go ahead. That's okay, because I've gone back a few centuries. I'm having milk stout. That's what I'm having. 
Okay, this is the dark night. So presumably mine smells like Batman. That's what I'm guessing. That's what I would think. Well, you know, maybe maybe not being quite such a heavy night for him. It's only, wow, five and a half, five point six percent 5.6%. So I, I am definitely, you know, meek and mild by comparison today. Um, it's also a slightly smaller bottle, hence it looks teensy in my oh, yeah. feet of the dark, feet of my dark night glass. But it looks nice, isn't it? Mmm, very smooth. That's as milk, a milk stout as a milk stout could milk. Sounds good. Yeah, I like a good milk what stout. Day. It's approaching that time of year for me too with all the stouts and stuff, but not for today. Uh, today I am having a super soft from the Sloop Brewing Company in, uh, what town is that actually in? Hopewell Junction, New York. And super this, soft. Super soft. Super soft. Super soft. Super soft. soft. This is an IPA with no boil hops. Store cold. Drink fresh. This is, yes, a New England inspired uh, IPA. Or, uh, yeah. And uh, this is 6%. 6 even. So oh, this will be a, a hazy, crisp, fruity, citrusy, piney. So what makes it soft then? I will tell you. Oh, what okay. makes it soft is if uh, Sloop has a, um, their flagship beer is called Juice Bomb. That's 6.5%. It's very similar to this. Uh, it's a little, obviously, higher ABV, and it's a little kind of thicker. And this one is very, it's lighter, pillowy, and softer. On the palate. It's I very good. It uh, sounds great, yeah. And lots of uh, like tangerine and a uh, little bit of little bit of piney hop, but uh, it's very fruity, very crisp. And I, I like because it's a little bit lighter. The problem with the Sloop has a whole bunch of other different beers that are all kind of similar, uh, but they're genuinely heavier. I uh, the ABV is a little bit heavier. So for me, like I have like two or three of those, and I'm like, oof, these are a little lighter, and you can have a couple more. They're they're more, it's more of a session version of the other one. Kind of like um two weeks ago when I drank that that Newberg uh beer. Mm -hmm. That's that, mm -hmm. very similar. I, I I like these. I, you know, for me, I love these New England IPA beers. Uh, and I love the flavor of the ones that are a little higher in octane, but I can't drink more than one of them. They're so delicious, but but the lighter ones I can definitely do more. So cheers, fellas. Cheers. Cheers. All right. So we've got uh, eight tracks here. So uh, what do we have first? Ah, that's right. The you know, we, we, we've formatted this. We've sent it out to the focus groups and they've told us what people do and don't like, Peter. Um, and yet we know. still make it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I still forget it every single time. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well... I've been paying attention, and um, this album charted uh, on the 21st of no November 1970. Well, for the chart, 21st to 27th of November 1971. At the top of the UK charts that week was Top of the Pops Volume 20. Now, if you're of a certain age, you remember those kind of um, albums, which, as I recall, they weren't really done by the original artists, were they? No. They were just like shit cover versions, really, really shit cover versions, and sold in their droves and had like dolly girls on the front and stuff like that. And they were crap, but they sold in their, in, in their hundreds of thousands. Number two was Every Picture Tells the Story by Rod Stewart. Pink Floyd's Medal was number three. Imagine John Lennon, four. T Electric Warrior T Rex was number five. Oh. Um, Tapestry by Carol King was number seven and if i hadn't have used some cds to put my camera up there i could have reached over and got a copy of a tapestry by carol king which i bought for a pound earlier today now interestingly enough at number eight is this is porcel by frank porcel hands up kids how are we spelling porcel e-o-u-r-c-e-l nope I had to Google, Google him. He's dead. Um, yes, apparently he's like um, the king of um, easy listening. Okay. And I always thought that was uh, James Lass, but no, apparently it's Frank, 
Frank Frank Porcel. Santana 3 was at 9, and at 10 was Four Symbols, as it was known by Led Zeppelin. Also around Bridge Over Trouble Water, uh, the Carpenters' eponymous album, Teaser in the Firecat by uh, Cat Stevens, Surf's Up. There were a shitload of classic albums around at this point, weren't there? Oh, <laughs> sure. Fog on the Tyne by Lindis Foreign. More than one Jim Reeves album, despite the fact that he was very, very dead. <laughs> Hence one. the reason that charity shops are still filled with them now. <laughs> yes, they really are, aren't they? Him, them they and really Russell are. Watson. Yeah. Uh, two Mantovani albums, Who's Next? Jimmy Hendrix at the Isle of Wight Festival, Tom Jones Live at uh, Caesars Palace, and uh, Fireball by Deep Purple was going back up the chart at that point, number 30. So some really top quality albums around, which now makes us all feel really, really old, doesn't it? Because we've got lots of those between us, haven't we? We do. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, bec- well, I think it's interesting, which means it probably isn't, okay? <laughs> Because when we did the last one of these shows, we spoke about 1985, and I was quite amazed to find out that I had roughly a fifth of the top 100 and a fifth of the top 200, admittedly US albums that were in the charts at at that point. So yeah, we are in 1971 here, um, and I've gone for the chart on the 8th of December, because yeah, it was released on the 8th of November 71 on Atlantic Records. And it did go on to sell 37 million copies um, for the band and is therefore, unsurprisingly, one of Led Zeppelin's most successful ventures ever. Okay. Think about that number. Start- That's a huge number. It's, it's mind-boggling. And you know, when you, what's really crazy is when you go through the whole Led Zeppelin catalog and you look at the sales figures for every album, it's crazy yeah, it's how crazy. many albums they've sold. Yeah, crazy. But it, it, took, really a month, is. it yeah. took a month to peak in the U.S., so it didn't get to number two. This did not top the US album charts, which is quite amazing when you think how many units it did shift. But it got there on the 8th of December, and that's the chart that I've chosen. Now, I had, as I say, roughly a fifth of the 1985 chart, okay? But in 1971, in the US, number one was Sly and the Family Stone, with there's a riot going. Then we have number two. We've got four, four symbols, Led Zeppelin, Old Man, done a thing on a wall, Bats behind them whatever it's called, Santana 3, fittingly at number 3, Teaser in the Fire Cat, Cat Stevens, then we have Chicago at the Carnegie Hall at number 5, one of three Chicago albums in the top 200 at this stage. And a then triple, we have, triple album. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they had another two albums on the chart too, so five records in effect. Yeah. At number Can 6, you, you'll be pleased for one second. Can you just imagine that that band, Chicago, 15 years later will be so bland. <laughs> it's so exciting and then so bland. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But still, but still, still sell shitloads of records. Yes. Even more, even more, actually. Yeah. 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 So, so number six. I, I don't want to derail the conversation, but I can't stress enough to people who are watching if you all you know about Chicago is all those 80s pop hits, you are missing out. Those 70s albums are immense I'll, I'll stop there that could be a conversation for another day anyway sorry well Steve. and i'm frightened because at number six okay you have to keep your mouth shut here Pete. okay not to say anything about this album not a word not a peep not a thing okay uh, 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 uh. At number six was a certain album called e pluribus funk by a band called frank, frank grund railroad as i nearly said there frank frank grund was a good lad yeah <laughs> Grand Funk Railroad. And I think Pete has maybe heard that album once or twice. Not often, though. Not often. Doesn't like it much. (laughs) Number seven was the Shaft original soundtrack. Number eight was Carol King with music. Number nine was Imagine by John Lennon. And then number ten was also Carol King with Tapestry. Other interesting things in the charts. Elton John. We had the Jesus Christ Superstar featuring Ian Gillen, Murray Head, John Gustafson, P.P. Arnold, Tony Ashton... I could go on. Two Who albums, Meaty Beaty, Big and Bouncy, and Who's Next, Humble Pie, Alice Cooper. We have both Master of Reality and Paranoid by Black Sabbath. The Moody Blues, Traffic, The Doors, Jethro Tull, Jeff Beck, Yes, Mountain, Faces, Santana, and Fleetwood Mac. And I own six albums from the top 100 this year. Six. Only six. 
and 12 from the top 200. I have fallen off a cliff here. I love 70s music. I have got tons of it. Early 70s, it would appear not so much. I think I own every album you mentioned except for the Carol King ones. <laughs> <laughs> I own a ton like, from this year. I, I, I have so many of I have. <laughs> Crazy how many I own from this year. Can you tell I love early 70s music? Yeah. Oof. Come to Preston and buy tapestry for a pound. You know it makes sense. <laughs> I would suggest that we have turned on our head. I mean, don't get me wrong, the chart here is strong, okay? I mean, whether I have them or whether I don't. I mean, I don't have Imagine, for example. It doesn't say that I don't think it's a phenomenal album. Let's not get into whether John Lennon is not my favourite Beatles solo artist. Let's not go there, because he's not, he never will be. But that's not the point. I actually think that the UK chart is maybe stronger than this one this time round. Um, I, I, I chose not to mention the two Valdunican albums. I see, you've just my bubble was here. Just say, yeah, I'm just saying these two two Valdunican albums, um, five or six Jim Reeves, uh, Shirley Bassey, Big Spender, Nat King Cole, and Dean, the Spinners. Not the Detroit Spinners. No, 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 no. The Spinners from Liverpool. Okay. What? The folk group? Not aware. Sing one of songs now. Go. I can't. But they used to be on the telly all the time. Uh, all time. No, I, I do know who they are. Okay. I do know who they are. Yeah. Um, Manuel and his music of the mountains. Admittedly, uh, Pilgrimage by Wishbone Ash was there. Um, yesterday's Memory by James West Big War theme movies by Jeff Love there was a shitload of middle of the road crap in I'd, probably buy, I'd probably buy that Big War themes movie thing I think I I think I definitely used to have it I like that kind of thing so. I may still have it but um, you know, there's a lot of middle of the road dross in among some things that have lasted like 50 years and may well last forever isn't there as always to be fair and as also well. There's Led Zeppelin 4. <laughs> yeah, there, is. there will always be Led Zeppelin 4. Mm, that's what you think. <laughs> and Simon, just to let you know, my local brewery does not currently have the coconut cream ale on tap. I'm very disappointed. Which means, I'd, I'd be I, which means I will go to my local beer purveyor down the street and I'll be like, what do you have in stock among these 9,000 beers that has coconut in it? Because my good friend from Lancashire put it in my brain and now I, I, I am obsessed. So it's going to happen. They'll have none. none. They'll have none. No, they, sh they should. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because this is the time of year where here uh, all the, um, the microbreweries are coming out with like the, the stouts for the, the fall and the winter season and uh, coconut stout or stouts made with, or porters made with coconut. You generally see a few of them. So I will be hunting for that in just a few hours. So thank you. Son. This is a thing. I, I'm totally okay with this too, because it's like, I, I, like I said, I'm a coconut junkie. So no. now, now that I have it in my brain, it's, it, it, there's no stopping me. This was an interesting thing that somebody mentioned in the comments after one of our recent shows where they spoke about these kind of seasonal beers and all these things. And they were talking about winter ales, and I was kind of going, we don't really do this stuff over here. You kind of go to the oh, section yes. and it's got beer here and it's got beer. I don't know, Simon looks confused, but I don't see... Yeah, that. there's a lot of winter beers here. Lots oh, and okay. lots. Up in Scotland, we just have beer. Oh, man, here. It's I mean, somebody's about to absolutely torch me in the comments. If they wanted to school me on Scottish winter beers, fired away. But any beer that I have now, show I can get any time. <laughs> Realistically, yeah, the, the, I've got the big some winter beers. Seasonal okay. stuff is big here. Yeah. Anyway, sorry to derail. Sorry. Simon, sorry. I am really excited, Simon, to hear your 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 uh, eight, seven, and six for Led Zeppelin four. Oh yes, on what will doubtless be my last ever appearance here on the UK collection. <laughs> yes. Yes. Definitely. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously you think I'm going to do my eight, seven, and six, but um, I, I do be better. Yeah, I sometimes I can be a bit contrarian and a little bit uh, iconoclastic. Um, I, I just I, I don't really like this record. I'm, <laughs> it's just saying, I'll just put it out there. I don't really like it. I don't really like Led Zeppelin, to be honest. And I have tried. I 100% promise you, I have tried, and I've been trying since... Roughly 1984. 
for a long time. Okay. Yes, my, one, uh, my, one of my best friends at school, he he tried to convince me that Led Zeppelin were the best band in the world, and I tried to convince him that um, Leonard Skinner were the best band in the world. And to the extent he tried so hard, he gave me his cassette of Led Zeppelin 1. Isn't that friendship? That is. Well, I haven't seen him since the day we left school, but nonetheless, um, <laughs> you know. It's, it's also, and I appreciate it's the debut, I know, I mean, I'm, I'm taking us off track straight away here. I'm guessing from Simon's reaction, we will never come back round and uh, favour, at least favour this catalogue. We will not. I know it's the debut, but in my humble opinion, it is the wrong place to start. I agree. It's it may, it may well be, but I, I, I have tried. No, I, I genuinely yeah, have tried. I'm not doubting that. I'm not doubting that. Yeah. But it's, no, I, it's I, I, do, I, I quite me. like three. I quite like three. Three. Yep. three. three. You know, I, um, I can even... I can even tolerate. Well, I, I definitely quite like Robert Plant's on the uh, the uh, Honey Dippers. I quite like that. Really like that. Like his voice on that. Like that. I, I even and I know this is not normal. I like that. I like. Uh, I do like quite yes. like. Yes. Love, love it. Love it. Love it. You know, I, I really, I, I genuinely, I, I genuinely like it. I like it. I do. Yeah. And if, if, Please if, tell if, me you've given physical graffiti a chance. I have, and I don't like it. Uh, but anyhow. Um, yeah, I, I'm, that's that, that's the sweet spot for me. But there you go. <laughs> I am about. I about to name the within the because we're never going to do the um, favorite least favorite stuff. I'm about to name my favorite thing that any any anywhere within the um, Led Zeppelin universe, and it's that. Yeah, oh, yes. I love that. Yes. I love it. Is, isn't there a um, um, expanded edition on the way? That's the rumor. I that count. is the rumor, and I will be count. buying it on the day it comes out. If, if there is, count me in. Yeah, count I'm, me I'm a big in. fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. I've got a live bootleg of them as well. And yes, there's some stuff on there that David Coverdale should not do. Wow, it's great. I, um, it's one of those things you think, why did they only just do Japan? Why did nobody have any interest in this? It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. It really is, and um, I, I, I will be queuing up outside the door when it. Well, actually, I'll be queuing up outside with a, with a mouse when it comes out. So. Yeah. Anyhow, um, Led Zeppelin four. Yes. Let me. Let me. <sighs> I do feel. Led I just Zeppelin. say, Simon. Simon. Even having the mouse ages you. <laughs> yeah, but I can't. I can't. I can't do with that like thing in the middle of no, no. I can't. I just can't do. Yeah. See, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Why have you got that mouse, Simon? Well, it's because I'm old, and also. I'm the one that's marking your work. But anyhow, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on, shall we? Um, I do find them absolutely criminally overrated. You know, um, you know bye. I really, really do. Really, and, and I think mainly it's the voice. I cannot get my shit, you know, I cannot get my shit together <laughs> with the voice, right? Let me explain further. Um, in, my, um, in, my, in my day job, I've spent... I spent 20 odd years in front of big, relatively large groups of people. And there was always someone, and for a two year period, it was my own son, whose voice I could hear and it would annoy me. Even if they were the greatest person on the face of the earth and they were saying, oh, I'm just going to go and save these puppies, I would say, shut the fuck up. <laughs> because the voice is at the wrong, at the wrong uh, wavelength for me. And on much of this this album in particular, but not necessarily that one or this one, Robert yeah. Plant's voice kind of makes me want to go, oh, that's not just somebody scraping things down the blackboard. It's a cat being scraped down the blackboard whilst the ambulance is turning up behind it. <laughs> I just, I just, I just I, it don't, and I know that it, he's a legend. And uh, everybody loves him, but I, I just can't. I just can't be doing with it. But anyhow, let's go from eight, seven to six, shall we? Eight, going to California. <sighs> I, I wrote ZZ, 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 ZZ. You missed out the lead in Eplin. <sighs> Absolute snooze fest, hippy dippy bullshit. I just, no, don't like it. No, just, it's just, it's just not, it's just, not for me. It really isn't. Seven. Shall we shall we do the controversial shit? The Battle of Evermore. It was eight. Quite, I know. You can make those things all you want, Stephen. It was eight for a long period. Oh, jeez. 
Um, I don't like the mix between the female and the vocal voices. To me, it's it's like absolute torture. <laughs> Also, so I don't like it. I don't like the lyrics, I sh- and I know I should like it well, because I like. We're going to be fun on this one. Woo. Yes, Stephen. I would just like to state for the record that Simon suggested this album. And yes, exactly. Can well, you did me. To... You did meet Wolf. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm the captain. The captain. So, there you go. I think, I think the doobies I did meet Wolf for me. <laughs> just and nobody watched the doobies one, did they? And he chose correctly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was his fault, wasn't it? Wherever he is on everybody uh, will watch this one. Yes, I you know. just, I just, I just no, I, I know that I should like it, and I should like this entire album. I know it should be right up my street, and it just isn't. Uh, I mean, really, the Queen of White took her bow, and then she turned to go. The Prince of Peace and Burst to go even walk the nice alone. No, no, no. Sorry, don't like it. <laughs> no, don't like, don't like the mixture of voice. I, I genuinely find it painful, and I promise you, I have listened to this at least ten times in the last week. Everywhere I've gone, I have listened to this. <laughs> I'm going to say good things eventually. I promise you. So, um, <laughs> can we stop recording? <laughs> um, four sticks. Okay, here's what I've written down, and I'm also going to perform it by the medium of dance. Okay, are you ready? Oh. Hum. <laughs> oh, baby! Got to get away from you, baby! Oh, just again. Just, just, no. I, just, I just cannot get my act together with those, particularly with those three songs. There are there are things about about the time. I'm going to go on and say some things that I uh, I do quite like about quite like. You know, if I was doing a Stephen Reed, we're currently in like 1.5 out of um, 10 or something like that. So, <laughs> also, I forgot to, to mention. Really, you know, I don't like that. Why? 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 Yeah. What, what, like that, it. Is that a US pressing you've got, Simon? Because my I've addressed no. somebody. My brother. Had this album, he had a UK pressing, and that had a lovely picture inlay. I mean, I've got an absolutely horrible. My U- my US pressing had uh, a regular, uh, uh, whatever. Did not have the. What I, what I would say is that the remix out, the remastered version that is on streaming services is way way better than that than that okay. version. That, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Jimmy's remix on this. Yeah, it's, it's a lot better. better. Yeah, I, I like it quite a bit, yeah. actually. Because uh, the, the original, well, I don't know if it was original or not, but the UK press that I had when I was young, or was in the house when I was young, had a grey inlay with the four symbols on one side. I can't believe really remember what was on the other side. The lyrics to Stairway to Heaven were on yeah, the other side. It is, because in this, it is just the lyrics to Stairway to Heaven that are in it. And, and the sideways poster, which is always... Yeah. It's always rankled with me. I've never really understood the point of doing that. I've never. Yeah. I've, I've had yeah. this album a very, very long time. I can 100% tell you it will never get played again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you weren't excited any time with me. Did you like the UK collection? <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny because I thought of you last night, Simon. No, oh, no. Thanks. Okay. Because I was watching the news. I was watching local news up here in Scotland. Okay, where we all chase haggis and wear kilts and things like that. Um and local news is usually about heather and whiskey. Okay. Um and it would appear that Robert Plant played a show up here just the other day and then he turned up unannounced at an open mic night and proceeded to play with the band that were kind of the backing band that night and do whatever covers people wanted and a few of his own material and I mean the guy that they interviewed that was in the band he literally was just sitting looking at the camera like this <laughs> and Robert Plant is five feet away from me <laughs> although this was after the event and he was just kind of going it's surreal these things don't happen in your life. <laughs> it was a glorious moment. And there is footage of them on stage. And Robert Plant's in the middle and he's having a great time. He's having a great time. And that was after he'd done the show. And you think, how nice is that? 
How good is that? And but he just appears to be that kind of guy because there were pictures. He was uh, the last time he was here uh, in the states. This is not that long ago. There are pictures of him hanging out in local record shops, like in Woodstock. Yeah, like just out of the blue, and there are people in the in the store who have no idea who he is. And it's, yeah. it's a, but it's the person who took the pictures, like, holy shit, there's Robert Plant. And there's all these other people, young people, like ah, some old guys looking at records over there. <laughs> but so yeah, he just he he just goes out in public and. Does this thing and that makes it really hard to believe that there are people out there that liken him to small furry animals being dragged down blackboards. Who might that be? <laughs> I mean, I couldn't imagine who would possibly do anything like that. I tell you what, though, what I will give you, Simon, I, and I will give you this, and whether people want to like it or not, the lyrics on this album are utter garbage. They're absolute. I mean, people kind of have a go at prog rock and go, oh, it's all any fairy and fantasy rubbish in Lord of the Rings. Hello. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's, what, that's what this tosh is as well. It's, it's, it's like, really? But anyway, that to me is the downside. Although I don't like Misty Mountain Hop very much. Okay, that, that is the only kind of make weight for me on this. It's got, yeah, it's got a cool groove. I like the keys that work underneath the guitar. It's still cleverly constructed. Yes, subsequent versions of this album sound much better. I like the production. I think that things do get room to breathe here, and I think you can kind of hear everything that's going on. I will admit that the vocal melody on this song kind of drones for me. doesn't do very much. It maybe doesn't hit that kind of it cuts you in half kind of sound, Simon, which is maybe why I dislike it more than you. Do you know what? But I, I, I do like, like the, the double-track guitar solo and things. It's the only thing that kind of feels a little thrown together. I know we're talking about Led Zeppelin people, but not everything can be perfect in, in my humble opinion. Okay. So number seven, four sticks. It's okay. I mean, the rhythms are excellent. Bonham makes the ridiculous just sound so damn easy here. Yeah. Yeah, isn't it? I mean, and that, that to me is what you thought. And that's what I focused on when I listened to this, which is no bad thing, because drums are under-celebrated in that sense, or drummers are under-celebrated. Maybe not Bonham, to be fair. But that's the focal point of this to me, and the rest of it isn't quite so involving. I don't actively dislike anything on this album. Maybe Mount, M Misty Mountain Hop, but not really. But the attention does kind of wander about this point as we're heading to what used to be side two, and it's just the latter half of this album on my CD version. But I still like it. And then number six, Going to California. So, yeah, I'm not really a massive fan of that kind of echoing vocal part. Uh, it, it, it's quite annoying, in my humble opinion. But the mellow parts... Oh. Whoever is doing the fireworks outside, I apologise. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I mean, punctuated by fireworks outside, but there you go. Um, I love the mellow Isn't this part. going out, like, virtually in December? Why would they be doing that? Um because we're in Scotland and they had to bring these things up on foot and camel. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's my six, seven, and eight. All right. My number eight is going to California. <laughs> I have never liked going to California, ever, ever. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not like much of a, uh, like a folk rock kind of guy. And I... I know lots of Zeppelin fans that love this song and they just cannot understand how I don't like it. Never liked it. I don't know. It's hard, hard. I did forget. I just, it's not for me. I, and I love this band, but it's not for me. Uh, so that's my number eight. Uh, I never, ever, ever, ever need to hear rock and roll again. Ever. And I've never been a big fan of it, to be honest with you, but I didn't mind it when I first started listening to Zeppelin 40 plus years ago. Uh, I'm at the point with rock and roll right now where I just, I've heard it so many millions of times. They, it's on every fucking TV commercial here uh, in, in movies. And just every time you turn on the radio, it's, oh, you know, it's uh, Led Zeppelin day. Here is rock and roll. And then the next hour, it's like, oh, we're going to play rock and roll for you. It's just like, it's just crazy. Not that I listen to ra uh, radio anymore, but that's just, it's, it, it's got to be the most played Led Zeppelin song on FM rock radio here in the States, as far as like frequency. And it, to me, it's just like a, a it's, it's a upbeat, decent 
little rock and boogie tune, but I just, I have no use for it anymore. And I know that's kind of sacrilegious because most people that's like, you know, one of those, it's the, the top of the pantheon of, of the Led Zeppelin is, you know, hits, but I got no use for it. All right. So now that I got those two out of the way, I, I really like everything else on this album a lot. Uh, number six is Misty Mountain Hop. I agree. It's not one of the best tracks on here, but there's something that it's got a cool riff. Uh, it's got a cool groove. I like the playful vocal. Uh, I think it's a fun song. I, I almost wanted to rank it higher, but uh, everything else here, I think I really enjoy immensely. And I, I do like this song. So, but it's, it's not one of the best on here, but it is really, really good. So uh, that's my eight, seven, and six. Five. Misty Mountain Hop. Um, Jesus. Yes, it's quite groovy. Yeah. The lyrics are risible. They asked us <laughs> to stay for tea and have some fun. Really? Okay. Do you not? It, it, you know, it's definitely quite groovy. Do you not think that you know the dum 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 dum? Do you not? Do you not think they're just rewriting uh, "All Night" by Kiss before Kiss actually wrote it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm right, don't you? many years before. before. <laughs> yeah. you no. Know, I'm not convinced that's ever happened before. Okay. <laughs> oh, and that's gonna get the goat of the people in the comments. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, you know, you know, I'm right. Anyhow, you know, if you if you're gonna go, if you're gonna if you're gonna go out, go out big. That's what I say. Okay, my four is Black Dog. Um, I can't look just. The, Oh, my ears. No, the voice. Oh, no, 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 no. Can't cope with it. Really can't. No, I think really indulgent. Ugh, I hate the outro. I can't listen to it without without thinking that I'm Matt Lucas and going, he's a baby. He's a baby. I just can't. I just, just can't do it. And the other thing is that how many times, and we've all been there, have you been in a pub and the, just before they do Rocking in the Free World, they do Black Dog? Oh, yeah. Geez. That's fair comment. You know, badly. You know, it, I can see why people like it. It's it, it's all right, but you know, other people have like made me want to go. I never ever want to hear that again, ever, and I don't. I what, three? Shall I do three? Yeah. Okay. Uh, rock and roll. Mm. Yep. Again, similar thing. I've heard. Every crap pub band in the world do it. I, again, I can see why people like it. Um, you know, it, it, it kind of does bang the listener into submission. You know, it's just kind of like in your face and I kind of go, whoa. Yeah. And, you know, it's the most quality track on the, oh. Um, and it's even got Andy Barron key, kind of style keyboards on it as well. You know what I mean? So you can only imagine that in, in the 1980s, Led Zeppelin probably would have made their version of Indie Army now. <laughs> <laughs> New, numerous cover albums I don't like the art draw but you know I, I, I can fully fully understand um, why, pe why people um, really dig this particular tune uh, you know it's, it's quite simple it's less bullshitted than some of the other stuff and you know it's alright it's alright I'm going to give it a good solid 6.5 out of 10 Ooh, wow I know, but you know, the other two aren't going to get much more. Um, yeah, <laughs> just saying. So is that is that is that me done for this time? Yes. Yeah, excellent. yeah, we'll do the top two last. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Good. 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 Uh, do you know what? I've never really thought about before just exactly what Led Zeppelin might be doing if things had gone differently. You know, I mean, that band split for obvious reasons, tragic reasons, mm. uh, arguably the right reasons. You know. But most heritage acts go through that period where you think, oh, what are you doing? Led Zeppelin didn't have to do that. No. Right. Because You've got to respect them for not coming back and just like hoovering up gazillions of... Um... Yeah, but I think that is easier to do when you have sold 37 yeah. million copies yeah. of this one album, this one album, and then... Mr. Page can, and quite rightly so, and doing a good job of it too, I may add. He can spruce up the collection every 17 minutes and mm. put something else out that has Led Zeppelin on the front of it. People go, oh, I have to have it. Have it. But and when you like, tend to want more and more money, don't you? And the obvious way to do that these days is, is to tour and be not as good as you used to be. Yes, and they haven't had to do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, they've chosen, you know, 
Skip, skip you know, they have chosen not to, but you do wonder if they'd stayed together, where they'd have gone. Would exactly. they have done yeah. a covers of them? Because everybody else has. And almost, if you look through the bands that have not gone away from the 70s, early 70s, They've nearly all done an acoustic album, a covers album, a re-recorded own songs album. They've nearly all done that. But Zeppelin, because they haven't been ever present, although they've always been ever present, haven't had to do that. Nobody at a record label has gone, hey guys, I've got a great idea you just won't believe. (laughs) Do you not think, though, that they've probably got the strength of character to have gone, oh, fuck off. Oh, Robert Plant definitely would have. I beat the guy into submission. I mean, I mean... You know, there's no two ways these people fuck right off, basically. That's, that's, that's what would have happened. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. But you would imagine that some of these bands that have also done yeah. that have mm-hmm. got these kind of characters in them too. Who ever thought Deep Purple at this stage of their career would do a covers album? Lockdown, not lockdown, whatever it may be. Who thought it that would happen? Oh, I thought no, that was my mind. You're right, not. I didn't buy it either. All right, I'm, I'm just as guilty. I, at least I bought the cheapest. I didn't buy it. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, some people bought an expensive vinyl version of that. Ten quid. It was ten ninety nine. Okay, I can cope with that. That was expensive for that. Haven't listened to it since. <laughs> yeah, right. Number five yeah. is rock and roll. Okay, I mean, is there a more iconic drum intro in rock? I'm not really sure there is. Uh, it's instantly recognisable. It's, yeah, it's probably the most straightforward song on the album. It's still in your face and it's no nonsense and it rocks hard. I really still like it. I can kind of, it's interesting that you talked about the kind of Andy Bone keyboard piano kind of thing. That's the only thing I don't like very much. There's maybe a theme that runs across these two bands there. It's maybe the only time that I'll compare the two bands, but there you go. Um, but that is the only minor niggle that I've got. The rhythm section here are just out of this world. I think that Jimmy's just doing his thing. This is one of the best vocals on the album for me. Have I overheard it? Yeah. Do I really care? No. Because then when I go to number four, I go to Stay Away to Heaven. And yeah, I cannot remove the fact that even more than some songs we've spoken about in recent weeks, I don't need to hear it ever again. I really don't. I, I just do not need to, especially the intro. Uh, with hindsight and having heard it thousands of times, it's over long, but it's still number four here. I mean, it's 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 funny because you remove all the baggage from it, but you can't. Yeah. You know, you just can't. You put it on and you think, oh, stay away heaven. But when you actually sit down and think, well, I've got to say something about this, you go, that's fucking great. It's <laughs> really good. It's just such a good song. <laughs> and I kind of sat down thinking I was going to put this in my bottom three and I was going to be really kind of snarky about it because you think, Oh, it's Stairway of Heaven. It is the cliche. It's the don't play it in the guitar shop. It's the covered everywhere, never done as well ever again. It's really, really good. The pacing is fantastic. The arrangement is quite breathtaking. It's just so painstakingly put together. You know, it's just... And when you wait for that... When the drums finally come in, and even now having heard it 76 gazillion times, you still kind of go... Oh, not yet. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, there they are. Because <laughs> it takes so long to get there, you're convinced it must be now. Must be now. Got to be now. Oh, <laughs> shit. <isn't> it? <laughs> it's really good, though. And it's an iconic moment. It really is. And the guitar solo is phenomenal. It's clever. It's involved. Do I love the song as much as I did when I was 15 and the song was still an old thing at that stage? No. No, I don't, because it has been overplayed and it's not as fresh as it once was to my ears. But I put it on and think about it and go, oh, this is really tremendous songwriting. Really good. And the vocals are fantastic. Then number three, When the Levy Breaks, this is one of these reinterpretations that Led Zeppelin kind of did on and off throughout the whole catalogue. The drums are ginormous on it, that booming kick drum and the slamming snare. It's almost at odds with a slow and steady groove. It's really clever. The dynamics are phenomenal on it. Uh, There's a determined kind of feel about the way the whole thing, it just crawls and it threatens to explode over and over and it never does. Keeps you tuned in. There's so much tension. I kind of like songs that do that. You wait for the release and it never kind of comes. Really like it. I even like 
the echoing harmonica that's on it. I don't really tend to like that kind of thing. But when it's done well, it's done well. And it's done really well there. So I like this album a lot, but we're really, we're in territory now when I'm kind of going, wait, okay. I can understand why people get quite so excited by this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. My number five. Bum 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 And that's the song, right? Yes. That to me, four sticks could have been an instrumental and I'd love it just as much. It's almost to me, plant's vocal is incidental. It's like it's just there. I it's a simple, heavy, cavernous riff, and Bonzo's drums just are mesmerizing. So that's number five. Uh number four, I actually quite like Battle of Evermore and I never used to. I, I like that. You know what it is? You know, Simon held up uh, Zeppelin 3 before and Zepp- you know, I was into Zeppelin when I was a kid and I remember I hated Zeppelin 3 when I was younger because it was like the weird, folky acoustic album for the most part in this catalog of, you know, heavier rocking albums. And I was not into stuff like that when I was a kid. I was hated Zeppelin 3. I have grown to love Zeppelin 3 a lot. Yeah. I like all the little nuances. And in that same, funny enough, though, I haven't been so kind to going to California, but Battle of Evermore is kind of cool, proggy, mystical folk. And I really quite like it. And I don't mind the male, female vocal, you know, Sandy Denny and uh, and Robert Plant going back and forth. I kind of dig it. Plus, you know, the lyrics are all about Tolkien and The Hobbit and all that kind of shit. And I, that, 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 you know, I'm into that kind of stuff. So Battle of Never- Evermore is my number four. And I'm going to go with Stairway to Heaven as number three. Uh, again, I agree with you. It's, it's here in the States, man. This has been a classic of, you know, or a staple of classic rock, FM classic rock radio for as long as I can remember. Uh, kind of like Freebird, it's a really well-constructed song. And I the same thing with Freebird. It's like, for me, Freebird, it's like, all right, can we skip ahead to the guitar solo? And then I'm all in as if I heard it for the first time. I'm the same way with Stairway to Heaven. The first, you know, half of it, 60% of it, I'm like, ah, God, I, I have fatigue with that at this point. But as soon as, you know, those ringing 12-string chords ring in and Bonzo comes in and then all of a sudden the big riffs come in, that guitar solo, I'm like, okay, cool. But it's one of those songs that, like, I'm okay with hearing it once or twice a year. Any more than that, and I'm like, oh, please turn it off. But- I think interestingly, though, that <laughs> it's only just hearing you say that about those two songs because I agree completely that maybe those iconic moments where they do kick in and get Tarsal picks you up and throws you against the wall wouldn't be quite so exciting if you weren't already a bit impatient. <laughs> well, true, yeah, because it, you know? it, it wouldn't work without the first half yeah. on both occasions. I totally yeah. agree with it. Um, but I mean, I won't deny that Stairway to Heaven is an absolute classic song it, it surely is and i remember being a young kid and hearing that song like for the first bunch of times i mean i loved stairway to heaven when i was a kid i got to a point though where i was like you know like probably like by the 90s i was like oh god just i've heard way too much but it's it's classic you know it's to me it's not it's not the best song on the album though never was but it's you know it's, is it up there yeah sure sure it is you know so all right, that's my five, four, and three. Now, the, the finale, the big two. <clears throat> well, you said everything I wanted to say about my number two, so I'll just sit here and let some tumbleweed uh, turn up. Actually, yeah. that's not tumbleweed, Simon. It's, it's some of the sticks from the from the back have just <laughs> flown. You know, the, the wind picked up and blew it across the... Uh, this album soon blew across this back one. into its place. <laughs> yeah. Forevermore, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, my number two is Stairway to Heaven. Uh the lyrics are terrible, but that's not important right now. It, it's that what it does have going for it is um it's got things that you're thinking, oh, I like this bit. And that is the 12 string guitar. It chimed, the, the guitar chimes. Oh yeah. I yeah, really, yeah. Real, yeah. real I really yeah. like that. And you're thinking in about four minutes, the drums are going to kick in and shit's going to get real. Yeah. And then the drums do kick in and shit does get real. And there's a reason why uh, it apparently gets played every three seconds on American radio. 
Um, and, you know, it would be a remiss of me because you remember, you remember all those years ago when we did the um, On a Storyteller's Night album and I said, I really like Lim Moore Don's song because it takes its while to get going and, and you know, and then all the <laughs> similar thing. Mm -hmm. Takes a while to get it. And I, I like that, you know. There's, sometimes it's, it's good to have a little meander, meander isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, 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 it's, it's, do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm, I may even put, put this at about 7.8 out of 10. I know, I know, which means that at seven point nine out of ten, um, and probably would be different tomorrow because that's just how shit works, isn't it? And I listen to things, and most of I'm not going to listen to it again. Uh, my number one is when the levy breaks. It's um hypnotic, it really is kind of like hypnot. Well, it's the only word I can come up with is it's hypnotic. It makes you go, oh. and it is one of those. Reinterpretations. Yes. Yeah. Slash plagiarism. Yes. Um. This is <laughs> just saying. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yes. Didn't they have to put somebody else's names on the lyrics? But anyway, yes. Yes. Allegedly. Allegedly also doesn't cover us. So Pete, you're in deep shit. Um. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you know? Uh, you know the, the, some I find quite much of their material quite hysterical. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and this is not hysterical. It, it, it isn't. There's a real, genuine kind of like sense of peril. You know, when the levy breaks, shit's gonna go bad. And the guinea kid, oh god, you know what? You know, it's what I remember the first time I heard this. I thought, God, this is terrifying. Hmm. I didn't like any of the first seven songs, but this is just like, oh, yeah. And, and you know, really, and if any, you feel like they're going, do you know what? We can just have a little bit of a stretch here really enjoy ourselves really show what we can do and they do and it's definitely worth a good 7.9 out of 10 it's my favorite when the levy breaks great song is it a great song so my number two is black dog Oof. i like a proper album opener i really do and um, it's just it's a great way to open an album and I just think that this the guitar sound on it is is fabulous. It's rich and it's full. There's still a kind of loose vibrancy about it. There's a bit of danger about this song. And I mean, Bonham was always imperious behind the kit, but wow, when he really just lays it down, it, it's an incredible thing. And I'm not always a massive fan of Robert Plant being a complete extrovert, but he does it here without kind of overplaying his hand. There's it doesn't kind of just tip over that edge into the what exactly are you doing that it sometimes does I mean I did John Paul Jones who kind of he's the glue for me he's the undersung hero of the band he's the glue that holds it together they're not as powerful a unit without him he allows everybody else to do their thing there are lots of bands that would have a drummer like John Bonham in it and would have no idea what to do with that because what do you do yes he's a great timekeeper but I mean that left foot's just on the go all the time and it's just always doing something and when you really just sit and listen to him, you kind of think, wow, that's really moving around and it's playing with the ideas and it's always doing the same without doing the same. It's really clever. You need somebody alongside him that can kind of go, okay, he's doing that. I need to make sure that everybody knows where we're actually headed here. You know, and, and he's kind of just pulling everyone in but letting them go. It's really clever. I just think it's fantastic. And then the production, as it's, it's interesting without being overbearing at this point, some of the album can be. Everything that's going on gets room to breathe. You get to hear everything. And the guitar solo is cool as hell. I, I really think, I like Black Dog a lot. I think it's fantastic. But then my number one is probably slightly unconventional. I would guess it's the Battle of Evermore. Um, I've always liked this song. And it really is just about the atmosphere. It's a word I use a lot. The feel of the whole thing. I think Sandy Denny kind of coming in and out is fantastic. The same again, I keep coming back to it. And I know there are better versions than this. Naf Atlantic version that I've got here and they're really available online and all this kind of stuff but the production of that song th this could be really flat it could be really boring it could be really kind of tight and contained and it's not it's free flowing and it's mystical and I really like the kind of ringing sound of the mandolin I really just think it's quite beautiful quite otherworldly I just think that as so many bands would have taken this idea and turned it Two thirds of the way through into a gigantic rock number. You know, they'd have taken what they built and gone, ah, look what we can do. And Zeppelin by this stage were kind of like going, 
we know you we know you know that we don't need to prove anything this is what we're doing and this is what we like and it works beautifully I, i've always really liked this song it probably wasn't my favorite when i was young because it was all about the heavy rock songs it was all rock and roll and black dog and all that kind of stuff it was like oh, yeah, yeah but the older i've got the more i listen to this album the more i think it's about the nuance and the nuance makes the heavy songs better and same again i do like pacing and i like albums that are constructed and put together the back in day you're meant to listen from start to finish and you're meant to kind of go, there's somebody's put this together so that I stay interested throughout and the battle of Evermore is what makes the other songs as iconic as they are. But it's the one now, if you've asked me to listen to one song on its own, this is the one that I would pick. So that's my number. Yeah, I can't argue that. I mean, it's, I think it's a well-constructed song. Yeah. Line number two is When the Levy Breaks. It's great. And I know people are going to be like, but Pete, it's got harmonica in it. You hate harmonica. Yes, I do. However, uh, I don't mind it in this song because the rest of the song is spectacular. Uh, the drumming is off the charts good. This is epic feel to When the Levee Breaks, which I love. And yeah, I get it. You know, not the first time that they've ripped off some old blue stuff and whatnot. That's, you know, Zeppelin did that quite a bit in the day. But, you know, who else? Everybody was. Um I love the guitar work of this song too. You know, the slide guitar and all this cool chords he's doing and everything. It's just, it's such a great song. You got, you know, plant is wailing away. It's a really, really great epic song. And, and I, I, you know, it's funny, Simon mentioned how, you know, like when he was trying to get into this album, you get through all these other songs and you're like, kind of like, eh, eh, and then you get to the last, the last song. And you're like, wow, that is, that's doing it for me. And that's pretty cool. So uh, that you, at least there's one that's kind of hitting the mark for someone who maybe the rest of the album isn't really working for. Right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a, a classic. And uh, my number one has always been my number one here. You know, hey, hey, mom, I said the way you move, going to make you sweat, going to make you groove. Love it. Absolutely love it. -na 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 -na. It's it's it's. To me, and, and Black Dog is one of those songs, too, that I've heard a million times in my life. But there's something about this song. It's got all these changes in different sections. And, and you know, the riffs are constantly changing. And there's the amazing drums. And uh, just, I love Black Dog. It's heavy. It's clever. It's complicated. It's, uh, yeah, it's so good. So it's one of my favorite Zeppelin songs of all time. It's not my favorite, but it's up there. It's up there. Well, what I would say about, about Black Dog, and like you do hear it everywhere you go, is that everybody thinks they can do it and they're wrong. Yes. Yep. Yep. As I just proved, as I just proved 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah, but I mean, oh, every band that you see thinks, oh, oh yeah. we can just not, just knock this one out badly. Yeah. It's, it's uh, definitely, you know, as someone who plays a little guitar, it's, it, you know, the, the guitar licks in the song are, are not easy. Um, and, uh, you know, the solo is just, just weird, right? Then the main riff is like, it, it's doable. But yeah, to be able to play this exactly, note for note, uh, phrase for phrase, not, yeah, it, it's not an easy song. Not at all. I think as well on that, that when you listen to the guitar grooves and the licks, and as someone that many moons ago played the drums, it somehow comes together, but you actually yeah. think about all the different parts. Yeah, we're not yeah. necessarily playing at exactly the same time at exactly the same time. Yeah, it's yeah. immensely difficult to put some simple songs together because it sounds really simple. You think they're just laying it down; it's four on the floor. It's really not, and they're just kind of doing all this stuff that you think hey, anyone could do that. And the answer: anyone can, but most of them do it really badly because they. They just play it like it's a straight ahead rock song. And once you do that, you take all of the reason that it's a good song away from it, mm. and you're, you're left with something that can you go, Why would anyone be excited by that? Yeah, you can't do it properly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. So, I mean, I think, uh, for me anyway, in summary, uh, this is not my favorite. Again, we do this all the time, it's not my favorite Led Zeppelin album. Uh, that obviously is physical graffiti, but um, it's one of their, in my opinion, it's one of their strongest albums, but it's not a perfect album. I don't think not to me, but you know, you look at the sales numbers and you talk to anybody who's a Zeppelin fan. I mean, most, most, uh, most people consider this one of their best. Although many people say that this is, this is probably the Zeppelin album that ranks very high on the overplayed scale that like, yeah. you know, 
most of us know it so well. I mean, I don't really reach for this to play all that often. I don't have to, right? Because I know every song like so, so well. When I do hear it, I'm like, oh, cool, you know? But when I want to hear a Zeppelin album, I very rarely reach for that one anymore. Because yeah, I, I would say there's a, there's a lot of ginormous songs in this catalog. Yeah. You know, there's so many songs that so many people know. But I would say that kind of trio of Black Dog, Rock and Roll, Stairway to Heaven, this is probably the album that your casual fan will maybe know more than any of the rest. Because yeah. those three just kind of seem to not carry everything along. And I'm not suggesting, I mean, the way I rank the album, they're not my favourite three songs. But common parlance will tell you that that's, that's where it's at. So if you picked up this and looked at it, and you went, oh, it's got the three best songs on it, because that's the three you hear played everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of not to get off the subject here, but this is one of those bands where it's such a deep it, they don't have a ton of albums, but it's a very deep catalog with a lot of great deep tracks. But yet you talk to the casual fan. It's like, oh, so Led Zeppelin. What do you like by Led Zeppelin? Oh, I like Stairway to Heaven. I like rock and roll. I like Whole Lot of Love. I like the Immigrant Song. And I like Black Dog. Yeah. And then you're like, what else you like? Um. Oh, I like Cashmere. And what else you like? <laughs> um, 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 oh, didn't they do Days and Confused? Yes. What else you like? Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I but, but that's that, that's the, that's a whole issue about radio and people who only yeah god we, we've been into this into this a million times so i don't want to derail this whole conversation but that you know this is one of those bands where you don't really think of them as a singles band and they really weren't uh but you know their legacy on what we call classic rock radio is is you know it's pretty great they do have a lot of tracks that have been played heavily on the radio for you know decades and decades, and decades. Yeah. <clears throat> but a lot of great deep tracks, uh, and one of the great, in my opinion, one of the great deep track bands out there. But anyway, Simon, what do you think? Wasn't as bad as we thought, right? He can't wait to file that album back on the shelf somewhere in some room in his house and never have to be bothered with Led Zeppelin again. I, I genuinely can't see it coming out to play in the immediate future. No, that's okay. That's all right. Well, I'll yeah, let I still it out of the bag and say that when we were talking about what we were recording and playing to put out his shows, and this one came back up, and Simon did say, do you know what? I've got a copy of this album. We should talk about this album. There's another one coming up, because Simon also mentioned that. Won't let that go yet. But when we said that, well, that's what we're doing at this point, Simon's immediate reply was, you're going to make me listen to that again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> and now you really should go listen to Physical Graffiti. That's what you should do. Yes. But I know that's a double album. That's twice the work. So you may not want to do that anytime soon. No, no. All right. Maybe after the holidays, Simon. We don't want to, we don't want to spoil your mood before Christmas time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Look on for the team. I'm going to take another one in, uh, in, in you know, in in a few weeks' time. You know, this, I just, I'm just, I just, I just give. I'm just, just a giver. <laughs> it's okay. We appreciate. It. We appreciate that. Uh, who wants to divulge uh, the next uh, next week's topic? Is there one? Is there one? <laughs> Is there one? <laughs> I thought there was. I could be wrong. I don't know. Uh, but I thought we had one. Uh, I'm not kidding. About it. He says clicking through things, looking for schedules. <laughs> oh, we've done one. <laughs> I don't think we've agreed. I thought we did the other day. I don't know. I don't... Okay, what did you think it was? Oh, I don't know. I did. I thought we. I thought we agreed on one, but I don't know what it Are is. We did another album ranking. Is that what you thought it was? I I think so. Hold on. Let me... I suggested that. <clears throat> did you? I did. Because oh, we're all confused. Cause... We're okay. You're seeing behind the scenes now. We spend weeks just going, oh. <laughs> as we're all going into our email as we speak. Um, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I see unavailable. I see question marks. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. maybe we don't. I thought, I thought the other day we. Uh, We've certainly spoken about doing something, but it's not necessarily been scheduled. Okay. I think, yeah, I think we probably agreed to, to discuss it further. So maybe. Yes. All right. So you know what? 
for everybody watching, next week's show will be next week's show when you see it. So, <laughs> we don't even week. know what it is yet. So uh, anyway. Like if, only, if only there was a bird-based, Elon Musk-based place where you could find that out first. Yes. Yeah, but you need to buy a tech and all that kind of stuff for people to be able to find uh, out. Well, you know, you unbelievably, there are other Simon Brays out there, so I don't think I'm getting a tech. No. Yeah. I know. That's I know. I don't design kitchens. I'm not a photographer. I'm not a jockey, so I'm screwed. It can be only one. Only one. The original. The OG. In it. He is the real Simon Bray. Um, he is. <laughs> yes, Absolutely he is. he is. At the real Simon, but not the at real Simon Bray. <laughs> That's right. God, it's getting darker and darker as we speak. Actually. I'm like... <laughs> That's because you that's because turn you more lights it. on, it keeps getting darker. I'm like, that's because you nearly mentioned Simon's name three times in succession. There. <laughs> I know, yeah, exactly. Like, all right, sh- we're shutting you guys down. So, anyway, yeah, um, tune in next week ride. for a topic that we don't know yet, but uh, it'll be fun. I guarantee you that. So, uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time in Poughkeepsie, New York, right, Simon? Yes, no. yes. yes. I'm yeah. going to share. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell uh, so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave us here today. So uh, for Simon Bray and Stephen Reed, I am Pete We'll see you next week here on not the collection of, but the UK connection. So take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye.